I say either. You I say either. I say neither. And I say neither. Neither. Either. Neither. Neither. Let's call the whole thing off. Ta-da! Catch up. Excuse me. Yummy. Well, if you have just been jonesing for the sequel to the 2018 standalone movie Venom, of course, based on the famous Spider-Man villain Venom uh, getting his own movie then, it was critically reviled for many good reasons, one of them being it's so noisy and convoluted as an origin story. Despite the best efforts of Tom Hardy, it seemed like he was famously at odds with his director Ruben Fleischer in that, and it was sort of all over the place creatively. Well, now they've got a chance for a reboot of sorts but really another sequel to Venom let there be carnage and this presents the ultimate showdown uh, kind of Godzilla versus King Kong it's these two things from the Venom verse and the Marvel verse and the Marvel universe and the cinematic universe whatever you want to call those verses now we have carnage versus Venom ultimately between these two alien symbiotes who have invaded two particular bodies. Of course, that would be Eddie Brock, the scrappy reporter played by Tom Hardy here, who has been invaded and now lives in an odd couple style relationship with Venom, this alien symbiote who's taken him over and represents one side of him. This is really Jekyll and Hyde, folks. This is basically Jekyll and Hyde for the 21st century. Two parts of one person here playing against each other, trying to come to be a whole here in pursuit of justice, such as it were. You live in my body. You live by my rules. I'm sorry, you don't know what came over me, please. Let me fix it. So I can fix it again. You are a loser. However, Venom's advice to Eddie is eat or be eaten and that is the kind of thing that eddie has to keep controlling with this other part of him taking over his body and emerging in full here to do the deed as it were well in this plot here reporter eddie gets a big scoop he gets the final interview with cletus cassidy here played by woody harrelson a convicted brutal murderer now on death row and about to be executed and the last interview that has been granted goes to Eddie, who uh, Cletus thinks will be sympathetic and is actually a friend that sees his case for what it is. Cletus has become kind of like gone to his soft side in the cell there, uh, does poetry, beautiful drawings on the wall. He sent Eddie a kind of cryptic postcard with all sorts of clues on it one way or another. Well, nevertheless, he gets that interview, which really pisses off Detective Mulligan of the San Francisco Police Department, where all this takes place. He's played by Stephen Graham. He felt like this is a betrayal. He's the one that should be talking to Cletus, if anyone should. So he's at odds with Eddie as well. They do the interview. The day comes for the execution. Cletus is ready to be executed when suddenly another alien symbiote, that being Carnage, jumps into his body. All hell breaks loose literally there and he's out. He's out of that. He's out of harm's way. He's back on the streets and suddenly Carnage uh, goes back into the body here as we see of Cletus who is dangerous, more dangerous than ever now. And the uh, whole battle here, the whole battle for justice against good and evil, against evil and evil, whatever you want to call it, is now set up between the two of them as Venom becomes the only way to fight Carnage here. And there are other characters here too, brought in from the comic books. Of course, Shriek, played by Naomi Harris, having a very big week here. Just saw her in the Bond film, No Time to Die. No time to die for her in this either, as she plays uh, Shriek, also known as Frances Barrison, who is the romantic interest, such as it is for Cletus. They've always wanted to get together, and now they can. She hasn't spoken for a quarter of a century and suddenly finds her voice here and that becomes a whole thing. She is just absolutely every bit as psychotic and crazy as Cletus is, a match made for each other, no doubt. And a match sort of made for each other with Eddie 
is Anne Wayne, again here, returning to the series, Michelle Williams. She's just fine in the role here. She has her own boyfriend who's much more reliable than her relationship was with Eddie, especially when Venom got in the way. You know, three's a crowd. Well, three was really a crowd in this romance, and it just didn't work out. They really couldn't be together because Eddie couldn't be apart from Venom. Good evening, Eddie. Hey, Mrs. Chen. Good evening, Venom. Person hi, Mrs. Chen. He says hi. He can't break free from that relationship to deal with the relationship with Anne. So there is that going on too, but at least she understands what Venom means to Eddie. So there you have it. Andy Serkis is the new director on this, and he is perfect for this project because it is all CGI, folks. It is all performance capture kind of stuff, one thing after another. The Andy Serkis, who is a veteran of many a franchise, including the Planet of the Apes series as Caesar, the Lord of the Rings, and Hobbit as Gollum, and uh, Star Wars as Snoke. I mean, who could be better? than Andy Serkis to guide all this, and he does a good job, frenetic as it is, it is so loud and whatever. I thought it finally kicked in towards the last third. This is an awfully short movie. This one actually only clocks in at 82 minutes before the final credits begin, and it goes in uh, somewhat over 90 minutes in, in totality, but nevertheless, and there is one for all of you fans, Marvel fans out there, let me give you a warning. There, of course, is a sequence that's thrown into the middle of the end credits. You'll want to see that, but it doesn't give you much of a clue of anything. It's just a kind of amusing sequence there between Venom and Eddie as they watch their favorite TV show. But nevertheless, if you wait all the way to the end thinking you're going to get another one, spoiler alert, you're not. So that's it. There's my little uh, tip for you. Uh, thank you, Pete. Kelly Marcel has written the screenplay here. She's true to the comic books, I guess. I'm not a huge fan of Venom, but there is a kind of, uh, you get used to it. There's a kind of a cute relationship here between the two of them as they battle each other for attention within the same body. And, and that sort of works, particularly in the second half here. Tom Hardy himself gets his first screen credit in the writing game here with a story by credit with Kelly Marcel, clearly throwing in a lot of ideas that he wanted to play as Eddie slash Venom, and so it's all in here. The first movie made $850 million worldwide, no, no doubt why Sony wanted a sequel. They got one here. For fans, I have to say, it probably fills the bill. It's certainly short enough for me, but I can't say that it's my favorite in the Marvel Universe, not at all. And coming after Shang-Chi, which was really a step forward, I think, for Marvel, this movie made in association with Marvel, of course, Sony has the rights to Spider-Man and all of that, it comes out of that world, is a doable thing and a choice for fans and comic book fans who want to see more of it. I wish it just wasn't so frenetic, but I have to say, for fans, nothing I say matters. You're gonna go, so I say, go. <laughs>